name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we give you all the glory, and we pray for a great northern revival to sweep across Canada, the Catholic Church in Canada, and all the nations of the world. Whoever you are listening today, we just ask the Lord to bless you and fill you with his spirit afresh. In Jesus' name, we call on the prayers of Father Fernando Suarez, who was our spiritual director and mentor, uh, whom we believe is a saint in heaven now who's interceding for us. Just wanted to give a quick word about Joseph in the Old Testament and the angels of promotion. I believe that's what uh, we, we've been talking to a lot of people, priests, uh, different people around the world, and they're experiencing a season of hardship and promotion at the same time. And that's really what happened to Joseph. You know the story. His own family members, because they were jealous of his mantle, threw him into a cistern, sold him into slavery. They were going to kill him, but Reuben intervened, the firstborn, who was holy unto the Lord, intervened on Joseph's behalf, who was the second youngest. And therefore, he wasn't killed, but he was sold into slavery into Egypt which is part of God's plan to bring his people into Egypt, uh, due to, really due to their disobedience. But what I never realized, I was reading and studying and praying the story of Joseph recently um, and seeking the Lord's wisdom on promotion, uh, because we all know Joseph was, was put in the deepest, darkest place, and then he was raised up to the highest place, the second in command over all of Egypt. But how did that happen? I believe that it happened through the angels of, or an angel of, promotion. Why can I say that? Well, in, the, in Genesis chapter 37, that's uh, the end, the last chapters of Genesis, of course, have to do with Joseph. So it must be important if he's closing out the first book of the Bible. And really, if the foster father of Jesus was named after Joseph, there's got to be something important in the person of Joseph. And I really believe he's being highlighted right now. And um, his father, of course, was Jacob or Israel. And what do we know? What do most people think of when they think of Jacob is what? Jacob's ladder, right? He had a dream, a vision, a night vision of angels ascending and descending upon a ladder. Well, interestingly enough, Jacob uh, at the end of his life, he blesses all his sons and he imparts to them part of his anointing. But before that happens, Jacob actually gives to Joseph his mantle, the coat of many colors. And if you look at the scripture commentaries um, about that, why the coat of many colors? What, what, would, what does that mean? How, what colors would it have been? Well, we don't know all that, but you know, uh, scripture scholars can help us in the historical context and stuff like that. And they've studied scripture, so it's good to read commentaries. But primarily, we should be seeking to see what the Lord is saying through our prayer, through Lexio Divina. So using both is really good. It can help us uh, develop our knowledge and our spiritual understanding. So what happens is the commentaries say that uh, the, the other brothers were jealous, not because it was a beautiful coat of many colors, but that coat was not a worker's coat. In other words, Joseph was not called to manual labor. And they were complaining and grumbling, and they had committed a, a serious crime. doesn't say uh, exactly what it was, but it says in verse 2, uh, Genesis 37, 2, that Joseph told his father about something his brothers were doing underhandedly with the, with the shep shepherding of the flocks was his father's business. So they didn't like, they were probably thinking he was a tattletale or something. But, you know, Joseph being a faithful son, which was trying to show his father what was going on. And his father actually blessed him and honored him because of that by giving him a coat of many colors, which was not a workman's or a shepherd's tunic, but something that symbolized um, royalty, symbolized that he was a favored son in, a, in the sense that he wasn't going to have to work. He was going to help his father Jacob oversee kind of the running of the business, which some of them didn't want to work hard. So that's what they would have preferred. Of course, Joseph goes through way more hardship than, than working hard in the field, which is what the prophets go through 
tremendous persecution. So what are the angels of promotion? How do they come in? And they're really not even mentioned. That I mean, is that even a scriptural term, the angels of promotion? No, but, you know, we can see that it's an angel that helps to promote him. How can we see that? Because Jacob's anointing had to do with angels, right? When he saw the heavens opened, the open heaven at Bethel, and he saw angels ascending and descending, that was a very important anointed moment of his life. So when he puts the coat of many colors, symbolizing a, a share in his authority, a share in his business, um, a share in his wealth, if you will, to his son, his favorite son, Joseph, Joseph takes on that anointing. Because right after that, it says, Israel loved Joseph above all his sons because he had had him in his old age and he made him a coat of diverse colors. Okay, that's verse three. Verse four, his brethren, seeing that he was loved by his father more than all his sons, hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. They were jealous. But then after that is when Joseph has a dream. Jacob had a dream long, long before as a young man before he even got married. Now he gives the coat of many colors to Joseph. The anointing comes upon him, just like it said in, in uh, when Samuel anoints David, then the anointing comes on him and he starts to get words and revelations like Samuel. So there's an impartation when somebody prays over you, whether good or bad. So that's why we have to be careful who prays over us. We're so glad to have had Father Fernando and many holy anointed people pray over us. But you have to be careful because something is transferred, right? So what happens with Joseph? He receives that prophetic dream anointing. And he has a dream and he shares it with his brothers and that's when they get really freaked out, start manifesting because those that are in darkness hate the light. And his dream was revealing something that was going to happen, that they were going to be honoring him. And they were already mad that he had this coat, you know, uh, that he was being favored, basically. So what happens? We know the story. He gets thrown in the cistern, sold into slavery, ends up in Potiphar's house. Automatically, that mantle which has to do with the prophetic because Jacob had the dream but also with prosperity with business with blessing financial blessing because that's also what Jacob had he was tremendously blessed financially um, blessed with many sons like he was blessed with increase so Joseph has that same thing he inherits the good those good things through the anointing from his father so even in Potiphar's house he becomes the the Lord of his house, like the main, the head servant where he totally trusts him. And what does that do? Uh, but he's still a man of dignity. So when Potiphar's wife tries to get him to commit adultery with her, or fornication with her, she had been committing adultery, then uh, she falsely accuses him, which is the, uh, the next wave, like the devil couldn't kill him. So he put him in slavery then in, even in slavery, he had a blessing and he was in a min, in ministering through that financial anointing. He was a blessing to Potiphar's house. So what does the devil do through Potiphar's wife? False accusation to try to make him look bad so that his character is bad so that he can't do anything anymore. Because he was a, uh, attacking the kingdom of darkness by shining the light through Potiphar's house, through working in his ministry. So then he goes even lower, lower than being a slave. He's a slave in jail in another country. Could he even speak the language? I mean, we don't know this kind of stuff. So when he's in jail, what does he do? The prophetic anointing. The Bible says later in Proverbs, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before kings and princes. So this, where does that come from, the story of Joseph? Because even when he's a slave, that prophetic gift is still on. He's still, even though the coat, the brothers destroyed the coat, the physical mantle he was given was destroyed, the coat of many colors. And it was put the blood on so that it looked like he was murdered, right? So his father thought he was killed. And the coat was kind of destroyed and just like, not, maybe not destroyed, but discarded anyways. Joseph was not wearing that coat anymore. But he was wearing the coat of many colors. He was wearing the mantle in the spirit. 
like it says in, in uh, St. Paul says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a spiritual clothing, put on the armor of God. There's a spiritual mantle that you can receive, what your mantle is in life. And Joseph's was prophetic and, and financial, business, prosperity. And there's such a thing as a Joseph anointing. And you can actually see it in St. Joseph, who was named after Joseph of the Old Testament. What does St. Joseph have? Angels that wake him up at night and say, you got to get out of here. Herod's going to kill the child. So he goes into where? Egypt. He's the new Joseph. It's the same anointing that Joseph had in the Old Testament. So what happens? Those angels of promotion that were with Jacob when he saw angels ascending, that means going up, you know, rising up in promotion, getting a new... Um, Promotion in the workplace, a promotion uh, where you're brought to the next level spiritually, whatever um, a financial blessing where you're promoted from one poverty, you know, to a wealth. That's a promotion. That's what that's what Jacob saw when he saw the angels ascending, but he also saw them descending. So the angels are with us whether we're going up or we're or we're going down. In other words, we're going to have trials and persecutions. And Joseph. He went up, he had the dream, he told his brothers, and then he went down into the cistern. And then he went down even further after Potiphar's wife falsely accused him. He went into jail. In jail, these two guys who just happened to be the top guys in Pharaoh's court, he interprets their dreams for them. He's the only one that can do it. He actually is the only one that's anointed in all of Egypt because he's the only Hebrew that we know of at that time. That's only one of God's servants that's in a whole nation. He's a foreigner, but he's got the anointing. He still has the mantle. So that gift makes a way for him in the most unlikely, unpredictable, surprising, shocking circumstances. And even and, and it has nothing to do with Joseph. I mean, he was a man of dignity. We can honor him for the fact that he said no to Potiphar's wife. He exposed the sins of his brother to his father. So he was a, a righteous man, a holy man of dignity. But the gift has almost nothing to do with him. And we see that in which chapter here it is. Chapter 40. He says, okay, this is the interpretation of the dream. Uh, let's see. He says, I'll give you the interpretation, but verse 14, only remember me when it shall be well with thee and do me this kindness to put Pharaoh in mind to take me out of this prison. So he was a prophet. He prophesied to the guy that he's prophesied. He said, it's going to go well with, it went bad with one guy and it went good with another guy. Angels ascending, angels descending. So with one guy, he was promoted. The other guy, he was killed. But Joseph prophesied both. He interpreted the dream but he also said, and through the interpretation, he said, it's going to go well for you. So, and in faith, he said, it's going to go so well for you that you're going to have influence with Pharaoh. So just remember me. Remember, I'm the one that gave you the interpretation. And that's, he's trying to get out. I mean, who wouldn't want to get out of jail in Egypt? Who knows how horrible it was back in those days? You know, I mean, even then, Joseph was favored by the head jailer. Somehow the anointing does that. It just gives, it changes people to towards a person that they just, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I'm doing this. You know, I don't know why I'm doing, uh, giving you this, but I just feel I'm supposed to, and I don't even like you. It's like one of the, it's like just favor, just, it's like a mag, favor magnet. That's what the Joseph anointing is. So Lord, we ask that you release your Joseph anointing. We thank you that it's available. And we thank you that uh, St. Joseph's prayers make it even more available. And we ask that uh, we can have more and more angels of promotion to ascend, to bring us into a new levels, and also to be with us when we're in those dark. You might be in a dark place right now. You might feel like you're in jail. You might feel like you've only been able to minister to two people in two or three years, like Joseph. But meanwhile, you have a call. You have a mantle. But you know what? We're getting into a time right now, I believe, where those angels of promotion are lifting people up. Because what happens, even though the guy 
forgets about Joseph when he gets blessed. How many people have done that? You know, people that we've helped and helped and helped, and they just don't, they don't remember. When they're desperate and in need, yes, they're seeking help, but, and they're thankful for the help. But when they get blessed and they're fine, they don't contact, they don't remember. But he does finally remember this guy that Joseph helped. He remembers him when, when what happens? Pharaoh has a need. He says, I know just the guy. I know the only guy. Pharaoh's trying to get all the witches and the occult to discern what his dreams were, which were causing him great distress about the future of his kingdom. And, the, and his main guy says, main butler, says, wait a minute, I know the guy. I know the perfect guy, the only guy that can help you. So what does Pharaoh do? He says, forthwith, at the king's command, Joseph was brought out of the prison. They shaved him and changing his apparel, brought him into him. Changing of apparel is a symbol, just like when he lost the mantle, when he was given the mantle, the coat of many colors, and when he lost the mantle, like a slave is like nothing, almost like, you know, yeah, wearing rags or something. And then uh, he was shaved, he was changed his apparel to, to be fitting for to come before the king of Egypt, the pharaoh. It's a symbol of change. So right now, I believe we're in a season of change. And what's happening is forthwith, suddenly, at the king's command, there's, there's going to be someone out there, someone is going to say, Wait a minute, I know just the guy. I know just the woman. I know there's I know this person that can help you. And it's not going to be through hey, advertising, look at me. I'm the best. You want to hire me because you need me. Maybe they do need you. Maybe you're getting it right. But Joseph tried to do that and it didn't work. He said, "Hey, remember me." And it took 2 or 3 years for the guy to finally and it wasn't because of the guy's good nature. It was because of a need, a need that created a call. And so that's what I believe. I just pray and I believe that that's going to happen to lots of people now. So don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. If you're in jail right now, literally or, or figuratively, you feel like you're imprisoned. The psalm says, Lord, David said, Lord, bring me out of this prison that I may praise your name. And so we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that you're bringing the church out of prison, out of scandals, sexual scandals and attacks, false accusations and true accusations, just like Joseph who exposed his brothers. Lord, we thank you for the coat of many colors and for your favor that's upon our life, which sometimes causes people to be jealous and not understand. We're grateful and we we thank you that you purify us sometimes through persecution. But we know that there are angels on assignment, angels of promotion, angels that worked with Joseph and St. Joseph to bring them out of danger, out of harm's way, and to bring them into a place of influence, a place of business, of prosperity, from poverty, from nothing to blessing, and a prophetic purpose. Lord, and we just thank you. We release that over the people right now. In the name of Jesus, as we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And we just pray this scripture over you again. Forthwith, at the king's command, Joseph was brought out of the prison, and they shaved him, and changing his apparel, brought him into him. Thank you, Jesus, for promotion. Suddenly. Amen.